Alongside Teddy Atlas, good evening and welcome to the MGM Grand here on the Vegas Strip in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada for our main event. Opening three minutes of this scheduled 12-rounder. He took a shot, but he gives one of his own. A left-hand scores. Laura's so dangerous with that accuracy. A two-punch combination landing. Good job staying away from the danger there. Marvelous Marvin Hagler in action here tonight, Teddy. What should we see out of him? Well, what a lot of people don't think, they see his chiseled body. They think he's just going to come out and get a sick and destroy missile coming at you. He looks you over a little bit and then figures out how he's going to take you apart. I figure the first round is going to come out probing with that southpaw jab, defensively alert, and again, taking a peek at you. Oh, he just misses with that headshot. Well placed, well timed combo up top. I like that step back right there. Just enough to be out of danger, but still close enough to then land a counter. Well, that's what happens when you have that kind of experience. You're calm enough to know that range. Know where the beginning of the punch and the end of the punch is. Hagler's coming up big here early on in the fight because he just showed his opponent, hey, listen, you got to be careful. I can counter punch you. No better way to slow down your opponent. You know, we know the other way you slow him down. You hit him right on the chin and you make him say, hey, I don't want to walk in. But when you make a miss and you counter, that slows him down too. Marvin Hagler's coming up with the answers, avoiding that punch. Will you look at this? Look at this pace that these two are fighting at so early in the fight. Teddy, each man must have been determined to think they can get the other one out of here early. Yeah, I want to see who flings first, though. That's what's interesting to me. Who changes? They can't both keep this up. Hagler's combination punching is working well here. Hagler's movement helped out there. He avoided that punch. Round comes to an end, and that's one of those rounds, Teddy, that just takes on a certain style, a certain characteristic, and that was a busy one. Yeah, it was a busy one. Look, Joe, you don't have to look for these guys. They're right there in front of you. Why do you think that is? Why do you think sometimes you just get those rounds where it all happens? Because of styles. You know, styles make fights. In this case, you're seeing proof of that right there. Both guys that are aggressive, both guys that are very confident. Tried to land that upstairs and was off the mark. Able to counter that attack. Laura's getting himself into the mix now, landing that left hand. Super two-punch combo by Marvin Hagler. He scored well after being hit himself. Able to dismiss his opponent's shot and then comes back with an uppercut. There's the combo to the body. Big uppercut right on the mark. Able to land the jab. Halfway through this round, gets rid of that effort. Hagler scoring with that right hand. There's the hook. A little head hunting with the right. Come on, kid. Right to the belt line. What an uppercut by marvelous Marvin Hagler. Not able to land the headshot. Great movement to get away from those punches. Ten seconds remaining in this round. Hagler's putting forth that hard work he did in training camp there, landing a crisp combination. And that's the end of round two. You know, Teddy, I'm looking at that cut as he's in the corner now, and it doesn't look good at all. Do you think he thinks he has to go out there and try to end this fight? Not only does he think it, I think he's right. I think that he probably has very little time left before the referee or the doctor is going to stop this. And he needs to be thinking that way if he's not. Keep moving. Keep moving. Down the 
Harris. Lonnie Lara's way off the mark. That punch didn't have a chance. Point the body, kid. The body. Body oh. shot. Good work defensively by Marvin Hagler. Plus, he landed that counter punch. Yeah, and he forced him to punch. He made him, he drew it out of him, and then he timed him beautifully. Lara's at his best when the combinations are landing. He scored well there with that combo. Off to the side, a little swing and a miss going upstairs. How about that exchange? Ninety seconds to go here in this round. He just missed that shot up top. Laura's right hand scores well that time. Side to side, move your head. Good work with the uppercuts. Nice job there. Hagler's doing good damage with the combination punching. Well, right there's a good example of the benefit of combination punching. You miss the first or the second, the third and the fourth, they land. Blocks a shot and then does nicely to work on his own. After effects of being rocked by a huge hook to the head. Not an accurate hook at all. And round three comes to an end. Deep breath. Deep breath. Get some water. You're good. You all right? You're okay, right? No. Breathe for me. Now listen, to a wide punch and he caught you. You know, tighten up the punches, all right? Hagler's pitching a shutout right now on Teddy's scorecard. First three rounds all going on his side of the ledger. <laughs> Once again to the head. He tried to nab him up top, but was unable to connect. Scores well to the head with the right hand. Little head hunting with the left. Laura's hit by a counter punch there. Laura's making me wonder if his legs are really truly he's underneath him after doing. being stunned earlier. I mean, you see him clinching here, Ted. And right now he's starting to wonder whether or not that should be his nickname. <laughs> Unable to score with the hook. Now hugging on the inside. with uppercuts. Laura's showing you a little defensive skill there. Able to move away from that punch. Good scoring counter punch by Marvin Hagler. Southpaw counters back with the overhand left. What a great job. He gave one right back in return. Nice work by marvelous Marvin Hagler. Well placed overhand left after denying his opponent's effort. And that's the end of round four. Hackler's able to land at a good connect percentage. Look at the punch stats. You're gonna catch him. You're gonna catch him. Keep, keep moving, keep your hands moving, and you'll beat him to the punch. Tough to believe that he can turn things around quickly. Hard to believe, based on the end of that last round, that he was even able to survive. Well, if you read up on Houdini, the great escape artist, it's hard to believe that he escaped some of the positions he was in. Remember that box with the chains around him and everything underwater? He got out of this. Teddy, there are opportunities that are here for him, aren't there? Yeah, counterpunch opportunities because he's got an opponent who's walking in a little bit. Now he has a chance to start to chuck something back at him a little. Hey, 
the tactical game paying off. You can see the counter punch. Yeah, you see the counter punch, but you know what I see? I see a little tentativeness now in him because he's afraid to let anything go because when he misses, bang, he gets caught. Oh, good exchange there. Still plenty of time to work here in round number five. Minute and a half to go. Punch! Punch! Landing flush with back-to-back -back double uppercuts by marvelous Marvin Hagler. Nice work blocking that and then an uppercut of his own. He missed with that headshot. Keep those hands up. A well-placed left hand up top. Firing off the uppercuts. Great exchange. Laura's left landing well. Solid. He goes down. Oh, he may be close here. Can he survive the round? Getting back up to his feet after being knocked down. End of the round here. Joe Tessitore and Teddy Atlas with you ringside. And Teddy, I think a, a completely different look than what we saw before because he's losing this fight on the scorecards, but he did win that last round. He did. It's a start. You know, you have to start somewhere to build. Now he has to start putting them together. But the attitude has to be the same. You can't start looking down the road in boxing and saying anything in life, actually, and start saying, gee, you know, I got to get six rounds. I got to get four rounds. No, get one at a time. That's the only way you can do it. That's how he's trying to do it. And now they're trading blows. He is damaged badly there. He may hit the floor. Laura's knowledge of the game is showing through. Three ways to defend, one of them is to block. He did it there well. Goes up top again. Marvin Hagler sticking to his game plan, regardless of the fact that he's been down in this fight. Yeah, and one threat you could compliment him for, Joe. You could say he, he understands who he is. He understands his identity. He's going to win or lose with that. But on the other hand, there are some changes he has to be aware of. And just grabbing on to his opponent. Laura's punch didn't come close. Counter punch. Laura's lack of defense right now is showing up. His opponent's scoring with the right hand consistently. Yes, he's found the target for that early on, and he's just staying with it. Nothing fancy. Uppercut after blocking that shot away. Hagler's doing well here with that two punch combination. Keep that head moving. And we come to the end of the round. I think even the casual observer, the guy who doesn't watch a lot of boxing, can look at this right now and tell you he's winning this fight with ease. Yeah, I'm not worried about the casual observer. I'm worried about the so called professional judge. Time and time again, he showed me that he does not know what he's watching sometimes. But you're right. In this case, it would be hard, almost impossible, to argue for the other fighter. He had his eyes set on the uppercut, but was unable to land it. Marvin Hagler's doing really well on the outside, utilizing his jab. Wow, look at that. Trading shots. Scored upon by a left hand. Oh, he's hurt right there. Oh, a big shot comes home for him. And for the second time tonight, he goes down. One, two, three, four. Five. 
I give him a lot of credit for even getting up from that knockdown, but he still has to impress and move forward here. Yeah, I applaud him. I give him credit, but I also recognize that he's in good shape. That's one of the reasons he got up. Halfway through the seventh round. He's having a much better round here. Earlier, we saw him being at work, but right now, he's the one getting to work. Yeah, well, you know, you go out to a restaurant, you have a half dozen half shell clams, you might get a tummy ache. Well, he's been eating a lot of left hooks. I don't know if he has a tummy ache, but he figures right about now, he wants to get rid of that indigestion. And the best way, start attacking. Hagler's making for a tough target there. He gets away from that punch. A crushing two-punch combo by Marvin Hagler. Ten seconds to go in the seventh. And round seven comes to an end. Free, relax. How you feeling out there? Are you not with me? Teddy's scorecard has him down significantly here as we start round number eight. Laura's knockdown that he scored earlier has not been enough to keep him in this fight. No, it hasn't been. You gotta light a fire a little bit. It's up to the corner now, you know. I believe in telling the truth, but sometimes you could fib a little bit. Maybe you have to. And right now, the corner should fib to him a little bit. They should say to him, you know what? That knockdown that you think you scored earlier, it's been taken away. What do you mean it's been taken away? It's been taken away. You didn't score it. So you better go out there and you better do it again. Keep moving. Keep moving. Hagler's defense did a good job there, able to avoid that punch. Devastating blow by Marvin Hagler. Hagler's showing us a side that we haven't seen before, and obviously the knockdown brought that about. Yes, it did, and he's hoping that right now that it confuses the opponent. Don't be so sure he's going to stay with this, Joe. He might just be doing it for a diversion tactic. You know, just to survive right now, maybe buy him a little bit of time, confuse his opponent, keep his opponent at bay, and then go back to what he knows best. We'll look out for that. Boy, some of the old school guys would really appreciate this, wouldn't they, Teddy? Just great upper body movement, so elusive up top. Yeah, this is an example like they used to say in the old days. He stands right in front of you, and you can't hit him in the backside with a handful of bulk shot. You can see he's trying to score up top, but off the mark there. Good clean shot, returning fire. Well done by marvelous Marvin Hagler. <laughs> Last 10 seconds of the eighth round. Unload, more punch. Let's see if he can build on the momentum he just created for himself. That knockdown did a lot. Yeah, well, he's an experienced guy, so he understands that he still can control things. Also, not only the experience, but the confidence that comes with experience. He knows this is over when he wants it to be over. The ninth round is here. Brings an uppercut that really does damage there. Good flush one two jab and a straight hand by Marvin Hagler. And it's a left hand. Comes right back with a shot of his own. Halfway through the ninth round. Here's 
one for you now, he says. Right back with the left hand. Unable to score with the hook. Protecting his head well with his guard. See, the defense pays off as he gets rid of that downstairs. A little defense turns to offense by Marvin Hagler. This round comes to an end, and you can just see that he doesn't have much to him, not much energy there. I mean, how does a trainer fix that? Well, first of all, you said a key word there. You said you can just see. Well, his opponent can see it, so he's not going to slow down. His opponent now is going to come out even faster. So if you're the trainer, the first thing you say is, hey, take a deep breath, get yourself together. Don't let this guy know you're tired. You're not tired. Back to action here at the start of this round, which is just part of what has been a very evenly fought fight. One of those fights that's going to be very hard to score. Comes right back at him with a left hand. Locks away that headshot. <laughs> Unable to score with the uppercut that time. <laughs> Some fine fundamentals, good counterpunch. Nice mousetrap there, he let him in beautifully. He didn't use G's, he used distance. Staying away from those headshots with his defense up top. Gets rid of that body shot. Straight right was lined up, but he missed. Coming to the end of round number 10. 10 seconds to go. Just need a big uppercut. He's in bad shape. Your best defense is to throw more punches. You need to throw more punches. That will Stay away from that power here, okay? Start of round number 11. Marvin Hagler's up on Teddy's scorecard. Just six minutes to go in this fight, Teddy. I assume at this point, just take some good advice from your corner and secure this win. Yeah, you have the winning lottery ticket in your head. Don't throw it in the garbage. Laura's doing exactly what he told us he would do. Now, he was stunned earlier in this fight, but he's sticking to that game. Oh, that uppercut. Got a big shot there. What a turn of events. What a turnaround. He scores his own knockdown after being knocked down earlier. And that's where scoring a knockdown hurts you sometimes because now you think you're just going to walk in and get it again. Well, he walked in. He did get it. He got it. Locks the headshot. Hagler's proving to be elusive. Nice block by Marvin Hagler. He got hit, but he sends it right back. Halfway through this 11th round. Not hitting his mark there going upstairs. Just not there. 
there. Straight right hand off the mark. Good defense just covering up down low. He returns the favor with a right hand of his own. There's the combo downstairs. Good defense upstairs to stay away from that offensive assault. Last 10 seconds of this 11th round. As this fight has gone on longer and longer, you're seeing supreme skill by Marvin Hagler. Good, strong, clean, and effective punching. And you're seeing a lot of frustration, at least I am, by his opponent. I mean, it's kind of like spitting in a windstorm. It's coming right back and hitting him in the face. Anything he tries to throw, it just doesn't work. They meet up for the 12th and final time. The last round has arrived. And he ties up on the inside. Needs to improve that accuracy. Miss with the headshot. Laura's showing a little bit of a defensive shell, but Teddy, I'm seeing punches still getting through and splitting that guard. Yeah, well, that's the problem, Joe, when you put those earmuffs on, but you don't move your head. Some of them are going to get through, and... Just as importantly, you handcuff yourself so your opponent is going to stay in there a little bit longer knowing that nothing's coming back right away. Okay. Back. Halfway through this 12th and final round. Head movement. Head movement. He gets hit, but he gives it right back. that blow, and then a counter uppercut. <laughs> and they will bring it home in the last 10 seconds of this final round. Final bell of what was a one-sided outing. Well, this one is easy to Ladies score. At least it should be. Let's hear how the judges had it and send it up to the ring. This was a sure and steady effort by Marvin Hagler tonight. And it earns him a unanimous decision win. Teddy, your scorecard reflects that as well. Yeah, I don't think it was ever a question of who was going to win. It was how. Was it going to be a knockout or a unanimous decision? We got it the right way. For Teddy Atlas, I'm Joe Tessitore. Always enjoy you tuning in. We'll see you next time at the fights.